Hey everybody, how y'all doing? I am Brenda Baker, a lot of people call me BB, and I have a company called Middle Child ENT, which is short for Middle Child Entertainment, and I do an array of things. But today I wanna talk about my platform, The Artist Corner. It is a virtual platform for artists to come on mostly unsigned to tell their story. I'm all about storytelling. Tell your story your way. Don't let nobody else tell your story. So you can catch all of this. I have interviewed artists from all over the world. You can catch me on so many platforms. YouTube, um, Middle Child ENT. You can catch me on Manhattan Neighborhood Network at 7, 6.30 on Fridays. And if you're in Westchester, you can catch me on Greenberg Access Television on Thursdays at 8 o'clock, 2 o'clock, and 7 o'clock. And then on Sundays, I do my documentary thing um, on Channel 68 at 2.30 and 9.30. So check me out, guys. You want to tell your story, Middle Child ENT, email me at middlechildentgmail. Thank you, guys. Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Artist Corner. Today, I have another talented artist that I met from the Song Battle League. I would like to introduce and welcome Mr. Fran Daddy to the Artist Corner. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate you having me. Yeah, I appreciate you being here. It's been a long time coming because I say congratulations, right? Because you did win, right? Congratulations! Thank um, you. Won the first battle, and you won. You won the Sweet Sixteen, is it? Okay, yeah, yeah, and the Elite Eight. I'm up yeah, Elite them. Eight, Elite Eight. Because they have so much stuff going on. I don't. I'll be having bass to break that down to me because I'll be all over the place. But yes, congratulations. Um, I would like to say that I think you are super talented, and um, I think you have a swag that's. It's your swag. Your swag is is what gets you. You have a, like the swag that reminds me of like the Mac and Super. <laughs> but you do. But it's dope. You know, it's dope. That's what you know. That's what makes people tune in. Is it's your swag. You know. And I know you've been doing music for a minute. But um, and where are you from? Tell everybody. I'm from uh, South Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Up in South Philly, my Philly people. But you also, you say South Philly, but you be all over the place, though. Yeah, um, I, I like, I like New York. Um, I like Baltimore, Delaware, mm. New Jersey. See, that's why I didn't say Philly because I see you all over the place. So I'm like, okay, but I knew you had some yeah, food. Yep. Shout out to Philly, y'all. Y'all doing it. So, Mr. Fran Daddy, first of all, how did you get that name? Oh, uh, well, it started, they called me, uh, my name not Feast, and I was going by uh, Feast, F a rat name. Mm -hmm. And they was like, no, nah, my neighborhood was like, you need a rat name. So they uh, they called me Franchise, so they named me Franchise back in 2003, when I was in high school, 12th grade, okay. and then... So I got that name 2003 when I was in 12th grade for battling uh, rappers in my neighborhood. And then I started uh, rapping about uh, females. So my cousin uh, Brad, he used to come through like, friend daddy, play of the year, bitch. <laughs> and, then he, and then he kept saying it. And then you know how once somebody said it, everybody else started saying it. And then from franchise, they just started calling me friend daddy. And then that just stuck. So like Snoop Dogg said, it was the name that they gave me. Right, exactly. And it stuck. I love it. So how did you start off? How did you start off being an artist? What 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 did you go through? What how did you know you wanted to be an artist? 
I, I know I wanted to be an artist uh, since I was five years old. Um, from listening to uh, LL Cool J, um, I was a young boy from the neighborhood. Um, you know, the struggle, whatever, mm-hmm. you know, try and make it. Um, but I was knowledgeable about my struggle even at five years old. So when LL Cool J came out with that song, I'm Bad, and I had two little brothers, you know what I mean? I'm like, that song, I'm Bad, I just felt like, yeah, you know, I'm Bad. So I made a dance routine with uh, me and my little brothers. And then my cousin, uh, Andre, he showed us how to put tissue in the tape. So you can record over it. Okay. Yeah. So now we had the LL Cool J on bed, you know, in the house. So then I see I could put some earphones inside the radio jack and put the tissue. Then I found out I could record. That was so it. I've been actually recording myself since I was six years old to the point. Mm-hmm. When I turned seven, my mom had got me like one of them tape recorders with a mic so I could stop taping over all her tapes. <laughs> That's how we had to do it back in the days. I know about that. Turning it on the other side. Yeah. So from there, um, when did you start like performing and really, really, really taking it like real serious? I guess I started performing, uh, I could say about 21. Like in high school, I was rapping, but I was, I had, you know, the scared, the scared to rap in front of the crowd syndrome. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, when I started performing at nightclubs, when I turned 21, I was able to go in nightclubs and bars, and I started performing. I was performing at a place called the Rusty Nell, mm. um, and then people would be like, you know, that was a hole in the wall, and I'd be like, I ain't see no holes in the wall. Like I ain't even <laughs> know they was trying to play. Like you just performing anywhere. Like you know what I mean? So it started off at like uh, neighborhood bars and talent shows and. Things like that, and then uh, my first big show, uh, I opened up for Remy Ma when she first came home from uh, jail, or whatever like that, in Delaware. Nice. Uh, uh, Delaware Live was the name of the event for the Loud Gang or whatever like that. And when I finished performing, uh, she said my name or whatever like that. And uh, it's on YouTube. If you oh, go I Delaware. know that was hot. I know that was a good moment right there. Shout out to Remy Ma. I love her. Oh, that's yeah. great. And I love her too. And I and this, I did, at this time I didn't know she was married to Papoose. Okay. So I see this person in the crowd like, who know my chick music better than me like this? Like, how does this dude know all her songs like that? <laughs> They're like, yeah, you know that's Papoose. I'm like, man, that's her husband. I'm like, damn, that's fucked up. <laughs> she, yeah, she was. She came fresh home. I don't know. She was. Had the gel thickness and sun. I'm sorry, Papoose, my back. <laughs> I ain't know, bro. I ain't know, bro. I was distraught. But, wow. you know, that uh, put a battery in my back that uh, for a person that's, you know, been out there to, you know, it was a couple of people that performed, but she said my name, you know? Yeah, that was, I knew that was awesome. That's why you are. Because you do, you, you you have a lot of confidence. I mean, most most of the artists, the rappers get on there, they have a lot of confidence, but you really, you you have your your, your image, your swag, you, you have it. You know, I, I knew, I didn't know your story, but I get it. You know what I mean? I get it. So from that performance, like that did it for you. So then where, where did you go from there? Because I know that had some nights. Yeah, I, I performed for... Uh... I performed for Young uh, with Young Dro, as uh, the uh, artist out here known in Philly, uh, Rocky Fake Bitches Hero. Okay. Uh, when I performed for her, she's. Uh, are you familiar with Rocky's Fake Bitches Hero? No, no, no. no. Uh, yeah, she's a uh, big out here. She also went up to a couple radio stations, and when I performed, uh, opened up for her, she was like, "Yeah, where the R. Kelly ball at?" You know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> So they had, you know, they had the city buzzing a little bit. Like, yo, she called friend daddy the R. Kelly bull. You know what I mean? Nice. That's nice. Yeah. That's nice. I, I say Sim Santana. You familiar with Sim Santana? He's from Philly? Yeah. No, no. Yeah, he got a couple big records. He got a record called uh, Flexing and Flashing. Um, he got a couple big records. And I uh, started hosting, working at the radio station called Glockerware Radio. Mm-hmm. Um, 
with a, also with a website called hiphopondeck.com mm-hmm. as the number team 17 the number 17 blogging site in the country hiphopondeck.com okay um so um i just start embodying it you know just becoming a journalist you know deeper than um rapping and being an artist just embodying it all the way around and i also became a photographer a videographer uh and i make beats uh engineer in the studio so i just embodied it like like you know i thought about like a quincy jones or something like if you know everything in the building it's like you can never leave the building if i just rap once my contract is over then see you later but you know so i just wanted to uh make myself uh more well-rounded to be able to stand anywhere you know Oh, that's dope. Like rhythm songs, like you, you know, I that's 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 deep, you know, because you're right. And what happens when you might get too old and you don't want to rap anymore? You know what I'm saying? You don't want to speak. You got all these other things that you can um that you that you learned, that you know, that you could use, you know. That's dope. I love it. What's the, what do you love the most? Um, I love to rap the most because it's my first love. Okay. You know what I mean? You're always going to be in love with your first love. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, uh, and besides that, I would say video, uh, videography. Mm-hmm. That's definitely like my second wife, uh, mm-hmm. videography. Um, and then I would say uh, making beats, engineering. Like, I really, you really had to be a good artist for me to be passionately working on your stuff because me being an artist i mean i can my my ego might take over and might feel like i'm wasting my time if somebody corny you know to be right. honest mm-hmm. you know what i mean so i really wouldn't i don't think i could be an engineer to people when i'm not feeling their creativity if the vibe ain't right then i'm not the engineer for you like, not, not, not just do it for money right yeah i'm not i'm not there uh, I get that. What inspires so I'm, you? I must though? don't love it. What inspires right. me? Mm-hmm. Uh, my children. I have five children. Wow. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm friend daddy for real. Right. They name me. <laughs> they name me friend daddy for I had children. So I guess. Do your coming. kids call you friend daddy? Or they call you daddy? What they call you? Yeah, they call me daddy. I mean, all my kids. Uh, they they all rap, <laughs> and they <laughs> like sing, dance, and I don't influence that on them i influence them to be intelligent like i don't as much as i'm into it i don't really encourage them to be too much into it because there's a lot that comes with it and um and it can hurt your ego and it can crush who you are as a person and you might have a false reality and not live to be your human self being caught up in uh fulfilling expectations of people that don't even care about you that is a good that is a good message that is the best message i heard in a long time and it's so true absolutely that's a good message like, uh, i see them i saw them on your video they be dancing and stuff you got little kids right yeah i got them for, I, I got my twins is 12 uh i got a daughter that's 10 a daughter that's eight and my son is three Okay, all right, all right, all right. You got you a little crew there. I know I seen a video of y'all was somewhere. They were like dancing, and you know, I said, okay, it runs in. Yeah, that it, and it be the it be the idea. Like, like I, I, I encourage and like they know how to pick their beats, like freestyle, have a topic. Like, I just give them structure, but I let them do their own thing, have their own expression. Like, you know what I mean? It's like my son. He was he he twelve. He was rapping about guns and girls, and then his twin sister said, "You is lying. You don't even do <laughs> none of that." <laughs> like, <laughs> like don't start that this early. All right. <laughs> I was like, "Yo, that's crazy." That's funny. <laughs> like, you lying. I, I was just quiet. Like, hey, well, I don't they, gotta say nothing. Right. They should make the whole song like that, and then she busts in and be like, "Stop lying." <laughs> <laughs> that's so cute that is too that's cute thing that's a real good thing so what are you doing now i know how, no tell me this how did you like the song battle league what was uh you know this is your second season right uh, no this is actually my uh, first season entering it uh okay. first season i was just an uh, onlooker probably a spectator commentator 
but this is my first season actually engaged. You wasn't in it last season. Why do I feel like you was in it like so many rappers? No, I just was spectating. I just was talking trash being a oh, spectator. Okay, 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 okay. But so how was it for you? How was the how was it the process? I mean, I definitely appreciate uh the experience because I'm a gladiator and I like to challenge, you know, um doing you know new things mm -hmm. and um i like how it's um i like how it's put together i like how it's organized structured yeah mm -hmm. yeah i definitely like how it's structured and um I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a risk taker and uh if i would like to say my songs is complete and if i want to put my songs against the elite and i need to be in some type of lead to do so you know mm -hmm. so i appreciate the opportunity to be able to compete in a league with structure. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's and, and I like the challenges. It's like being on Fair Factor or being on Gladiators. You got three minutes to go up this wall and touch that <laughs> bell. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. It's like it's like the Rap Olympics. Yeah, you know? it is, it is. And Baz makes it very exciting because he's really into it and he's personal with everything. And that's what really guides the song Battle League to me. Baz is like, I mean, they have a whole team, but what you see is Baz and and he kind of makes it, he makes it exciting and he makes people want to do it. I haven't been following lately, but um I plan on watching the IGs. But yeah, I, I like it too. I think the challenge is nice. And I mean, it, it to me it helps artists. Like, you know, get on that platform. Rather you win or lose, you know, it, it doesn't really matter, you know. So, but you're right. You gotta have a big ego, though. You better, cause you, you and uh, you know, it's all about getting people to hear your music and gaining new fans. You yep. know. Yep. So, um, like my EP, it's called the Skinny Big Papa. You know what I mean? Okay. So, it started off with uh, LL Cool J, then Snoop Dogg uh, had the first like rap song that I knew word for word. Okay. You know, so Snoop Dogg then became my uh, favorite rapper. And then as I matured into middle school and started to listen to music, it became Biggie Smalls. Yeah. You know what I mean? So my style is Biggie Smalls, LL Cool J, you know, and I, um, Snoop Dogg, and a little bit of cannabis with the metaphors, you know? Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Like cannabis is like my raw side, but my smooth side is that skinny big problem, you know? And um, that that EP, that music is basically the music I've been playing on the song battle league. Okay. Yeah, it's from the uh, skinny big Papa EP. All the music that I played so far was from that. So oh. I got many songs, but I wanted to, I wanted to see what Skinny Big Papa do against them. You know, Fred and Daddy got a lot of tracks and all that, but uh, mm -hmm. I wanted to I wanted to bring it out. I premiered Skinny Big Papa on the song Battle League. Okay, okay, and that's your is that your latest um a project? Yeah, that's my latest project, and that's my other side. You know, that's 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 my uh alter ego. You know, Skinny Big Papa, he he more for the ladies. You know what okay. I mean? So when I'm in my skinny big papa mode, it's just fun. It's like it, it, it's very exciting. It's a lot of charisma, you know. Friend daddy from the sugar water oodles and noodle sandwiches. Friend daddy from the trenches. I'm the neighborhood hero. Yeah. But skinny big papa, you know what I mean? He makes sugar water look like crystal. I love it. I love it. I love it. And you—that's your attitude that you have when you're on there. You—you you have a good time. You never out just, you know, nobody takes you out of yourself. You are just, you have a good time and you are friend. You all know you skinny papa on there. Cause that's, it's your, your persona is, is just to me, it's capturing when you, okay. You right. You right. You wasn't on, but you used to get on there and talk. And I used to say, Oh my God, I cannot wait to hear him, hear him because your, your, um, aura, like what you give off. It's like, yeah, I want to hear him. I want to hear this nigga. I want to see what he's talking about. Because that's that's what you give off. And that's that's what it's all about. You know, you got this little swag about yourself. You know, so now I get it. It's Brand Danny and it's Skinny Big Papa. I get it. I get it. I like it. 
I like it. So what are you doing now currently? Um, currently, I have Philly Uncut on Tubi. Uh, if you got Tubi, the uh, the movie application, Philly Uncut on there, part one, two, and three. Um, so I have some films right now in there that y'all could check out. And I'm doing a fashion show in December at the Met. And also in three weeks, I have Skinny Big Pop of Volume 1 coming out. Then I got Part 2 coming out three months later. That's the Frank White edition. And then right after that, we're going to have Notorious. You know okay. what I mean? I got all three of them done already. So I got all three projects done. So right now, I'm just... Right now, where I'm at is in marketing and how I'm going uh, to deliver it. As far as my videos, I, I want to kind of recreate a lot of where I'll gank it this type of, okay. type of things. Like I want my videos to be real. Buster Rhyme-ish. Yeah, like like that Buster Rhymes. Uh, like, real, like a, a lot like Shagadelic Harlem Nights. Mm -hmm. Like real, like... Like a little abstract, yeah. but a little retro. I can see that. I can see that. Yeah, abstract retro. Like, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to present myself as nothing. What's going on? Like, I don't want nothing new in what's in current style. Like, I want to. You know what I mean? Like a lot of '80s, '90s Mac clothes and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, you know what? To me. That's kind of like your, your what you give off, you know. Anyway, that's the energy to me. That's what I get from you. I mean, I'm old school. So when you start talking, you remind me of that, like Chicago. You know what I'm saying? Back in the days, you remind me of that. So that's that's what I get from you. How about the radio station? You doing a radio station? Yeah, Glockaway Radio Station. I'm a host from uh, Friday six to eight, the Worldwide Uncut Podcast Show. Um, also, if you have, you know, on your phone, the, Go the uh, Google Play Store or the iStone, mm -hmm. or the iTunes Store, wherever it's called, download the Glockerware app. And um, mm -hmm. we have, we stream 24-7. Um, we do a lot of showcases. We have about 18 different radio shows on our platform. Nice. Um, so uh, that's definitely a good look. Uh, we did number one. And in that radio station in our uh, area, we won a Philly Hip Hop Awards three years back to back to back to back. That's consecutive. Three P. Um, there's a lot of things that's uh, you know definitely going on, and the radio helped me be a better artist because I know where radio songs is. You know what I'm saying? So I get the I get to watch people respond to music. So the good thing about the radio is not uh, being, you know, just caught up in my music, just understanding what music moves people and what makes a good song and why do people like certain artists. So being in the radio uh, gave me an opportunity to be a journalist to make my own music better. Glock aware. Glock like, like, yeah, right. like rock aware, but Glock aware. G-L-O-C-A-W-E-A-R. It was uh, it was a t-shirt company about ten years ago. Um, it, it was out of New York. It was the shirts with the guns on the Glockaware, uh, Toucan and Shabs. And now it just you know it materialized to a radio station and the storefront that uh, we do custom made clothing and embroidery. So we make right. clothes for artists. We're we're a hub for underground and uh, even sign artists in our community. So we're pretty much a hub for artists that need to uh, promote themselves and to design and create their image. I um, I love to see brothers doing their thing, you know, and thinking outside of the box. That's everything. You know, that's everything. But yeah, anyway. I, I definitely appreciate it. It's definitely inspiring to be uh, interviewed and be acknowledged because, you know, that's the whole reason of you know, doing this, you know, for people to hear out, you know, ultimately I want them to gain something for my music. Like, I ain't the biggest fan of Tupac and people might be mad because, you know, that's like Biggie thing. It's like the AI Kobe thing, man. It's just how life works, you know what uh, I mean? Mm -hmm. But Tupac said one of the best thing I've ever heard for my artist. A reporter said, Tupac, is you trying to make people do anything with your music? He said, yeah. The reporter said, what? 
and Tupac would fly, I think. So ultimately, mm. that's that's where I'm at. Like, that's what I want to get people to do think, you know, with right. my music. Uh-huh. And then, like, even if I'm having a song and it might sound ratchet or derogatory, if you really listen to the words, you can gain is a message in all my music, rather if it sound like I'm playing or being derogatory. Right. No, your last song, I don't really want to quote it because sometimes I, I would have to, but I know it was something in there I liked. It was about like women hustling. It was oh, yeah. It was Only Fans because, you know, they got the Only Fans page, you know, there's all these women with the Only Fans. So all I'm saying is, I don't want to have to subscribe to you just to vibe with you. You feel me? Yeah. Like, and I don't only want to be a fan. Put me in the game. I, I want. I like to play. I'm an athlete. I'm a basketball player. I'm six five. Like, I'm not don't pom pom holder. I play ball. <laughs> don't only fans me. <laughs> I and love it. My, yeah, like, wish you don't got no air conditioning. What you mean, only fans? <laughs> I love it. I'm telling you, you you are entertaining. I I will come to your show. You can do a whole show. I would definitely be in the front row. You are entertaining, and I like it. Sometimes you want to be entertained. You want to, you know, don't take it so heavy, so serious. You know, like you got you got some artists that you want to kill each other up there. I'm like, no, but verbally, but you are like you're entertaining, and I I I appreciate it. I definitely appreciate it. But friend, daddy, I want to thank you. You're gonna give me all your information. And yeah. I'm gonna put it up so you know people who watch my show they can follow you and they will definitely not be disappointed because you are definitely okay. entertaining. I want to thank you, Fran Daddy, for coming on um, the Artist Corner and showing us some love. I truly appreciate you. Uh, thank you. I appreciate y'all. I appreciate the platform. Y'all make sure y'all check me out everywhere, Fran Daddy SP. You know, shout out to the Real Song Battle League. Shout out to the Real Artist Corner. You know, make sure y'all follow her and support everything that she got going on. And, you know, let's get it. Let's make it work. Let's do it. Thank you. Thank you, friend.